Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is Major Histocompatibility Complex and uh, we will discuss today how does the MSC presents the antigen to the T cell, what is the structure and the functions and what is invariant chain because most of the US family students when they are doing the vineyard they find it difficult to understand this concept. So try to watch the entire video guys. I am sure you can answer all the questions related to this topic. So what the MSC, these are the protein markers. They are present in every cells of the vertebrate. And when they are present in humans, they are called the HLA. So that's a human leukocyte antigen. And these MSC, when they are present in human, they call it HLA and they are present on chromosome number 6. Okay, that's important. Now we should understand that what are the immune cells, what are the adaptive immunity. The cells of the adaptive immunity are the B cells and the T cells. So the B cells, as we know that it arises from the bone marrow. The T cells also arises from the bone marrow, but the B cells mature in the bone marrow. The T cells mature in the thymus. And where is the thymus, guys? It is present in the anterior mediastinum. And what kind of organ is the thymus? It's a lympho, that means lymphocytes and an epithelial cell. So it is a lymphoepithelial organ, okay, where the T cells will get mature. And what are the different types of T cells which are involved in MSC? So that's T, T helper cells and the cytotoxic T cell. Why it is called helper T cell? Because it is helping the B cells to stimulate the production of plasma cells. And plasma cells will produce antibodies like IgG, IgE and IgA depending upon what kind of infection. Then we have another type of T cell that is a cytotoxic T cell that is CD8 T cell. What is the function of this? These are the and they have an antiviral that means they kill the virally infected cell and they also kill the cells which are affected with the tumor. So causing apoptosis of those cells. So in the next picture, I am going to explain how does the MSC take this antigen and give it to the different types of T cell. Before we understand that guys, let us understand the structure and the normal and the infected cells. As you can see here, this is the MSC1. If I write here, this is MSC1 and this is the structure of the MSC2. So here you see the in the first state they have mentioned clearly that the MSC1 is they have a unequal length. You can see the length one is a larger length of the MSC and one is the smaller length. So the larger one is getting attached to the cell membrane and as you can see in this image if you compare this image you see this is just normal cell and they have the MSC with the, the because the normal cell is producing the antigen this is the antigen here and this is the antigen or the peptide here and this is the MSC this, this whole of it is the MSC sitting on the cell membrane and this is the cell membrane. So what I meant to say is that the MSCs are uh, in humans they are the HLA they are located in every cell of our body okay and they are also located in normal cells and infected cells. So when they are expressed on the cell membrane you can see the cell membrane here and they uh, the antigens will come and bite to the area this is the peptide binding area. I just wanted to compare the picture of a normal cell with that of the MSC so that you can have an idea where does the MSC is sitting and how does it binds to the antigen. So again coming back to this picture, we saw that MSC1 has a larger one large length and a smaller one that is alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 and a beta 2 microglobulin. And this is the area where you have the peptide binding group where the antigen or the peptide is coming and binding here. But in the MSC2, the both of them have an equal length and both are sitting on the cell membrane and they have two alpha and two beta chains. Okay. And this is the peptide binding group again where the peptide is coming in binding here. So now we understand the structure of MSC1 and 2. 
what happens when a person is infected with a virus or what happens normally so normally these normal cells they do have msc on their surface normal cells also present self antigens see these are the self antigens these are all the self antigens they are sitting on the msc and when a leukocyte when it uh, when it is moving all over the body when it sees a antigen uh, sitting on the msc of a normal cell it will it will recognize it and think oh this is a normal cell and which has a self antigen i just have to don't do anything i don't bother because i know it's a normal so it will just leave and just go ahead it doesn't do anything unlike a cell which is infected with a unlike this is a infected cell which is let's say it is infected with a virus or a tumor so these infected cell they will produce pathogenic antigen so these antigens are sitting on the msc and now when the leukocyte is roaming all over it will see okay that is a foreign antigen i need to take care of it and then it will try to kill those infected cell so how that is going to do we will be discussing in the next image again in first aid uh, step one guys they have mentioned that msc uh, one they uh, what is exactly the difference between msc one and two this msc one they are expressed on all nucleated cells okay you can write it here all nucleated cells except except rbc why rbc because rbc do not have nucleus they don't have nucleus okay so all nucleated cell unlike the msc2 they are expressed on all antigen presenting cell so i'll be discussing about the msc2 in the next image now let's focus on msc1 so they are presenting the what did we say that what is the function of msc its job is to present this antigen this is the antigen and it will give it msc1 gives the antigen to the cd8 or the cytotoxic t cells so how does it do that so as you can see here this is an endogenous antigen or a pathogen this pathogen is a very large and it cannot fit into the msc so they are taken uh, they are already endogenous okay so they are broken down by the barrel separate structure sometimes the vineyard may not give you a proteasome it may say barrel separate structure tag with ubiquitin okay on an abnormal protein so this is an abnormal protein or a pathogen and they are broken down into smaller pieces by the proteasome and that are oligopeptides or less smaller peptides okay and these peptides they are taken up by the transporter associated antigen processing or a tab and they are loaded onto the msc so where is the msc is present they are present in the rough endoplasmic reticulum and they once the antigen comes to the tab it gets goes to the golgi where the antigen is bound to the msc on the peptide binding group and now the MSC is ready to bind to the MSC with the antigen is ready to the bind to the CD8 T cell because MSC1 binds to CD8 T cells right with the help of T cell receptor so now what what will happen the next thing which is going to happen now T cells the job of the T cell we said that it is on antiviral and anti tumor properties so it will because let's say this is a any viral in viral uh, pathogen then these cd8 or t cells they will release porphyrins porphyrins and granzymes and then they they can destroy the cell so let me draw a picture here guys let's say this is a infected cell because this is a msc this is the msc which is uh, you see this is the msc with the antigen this is the we want to destroy this antigen how do the t cell will destroy this antigen this 
so infected cell and this is our T cell CD8 uh, CD8 T cell or the cytotoxic T cell so it will first form perforins like a holes here these are the perforins and then you have the it will send the granzymes within it and that will cause the, the granzymes and that will cause apoptosis of the entire infected cell so that is how the cd8 t cells plus an important role in killing the whole of the infected pathogen okay with the release of perforins and granzymes so that was the msc1 okay so it was dealing with the endogenous pathogen so what happens in msc2 as we saw that msc2 is expressed is given in first aid also guys that msc2 is expressed on all the antigen presenting cells and what are the antigen presenting cells they are the macrophages the b cell then you have the dendritic cell and the Langerhans cells guys most of my students they confuse Langerhans cells with the um, Langhans gen cells okay Langhans gen cells are the gen cells you will see in tuberculous granuloma Langerhans cells are the dendritic cells of the skin okay they are the phagocytic cells of the skin not to confuse between these two terms so these and MSC2 they are present on the antigen presenting cells like macrophage B cell dendritic cells and Langerhans cells unlike the MSC1 which was present in all nucleated cells okay so in MSC2 it will take up the exogenous pathogen unlike the endogenous one in MSC1 these pathogens they are they go to the phagosome where there's a, this environment is an acidified environment so I can write it here acidified environment so when this uh, when this pathogen is in the acidified environment now what will happen you when we saw that msc2 is present in the rough endoplasmic reticulum and this MSC2 is this area is not open this is locked with some what is the chain that is the invariant chain there's very high yield for step one guys okay they may uh, ask you about the invariant chain that you can you can uh, see in NBME, Ambrose or any of the vignette if you are coming across MSC2 if they say that they are locked by the MSC now the antigen cannot get loaded here so what will happen if the invariant chain why the invariant chain is there they don't want that that should be premature attachment of the antigen to the msc as a result as a result the invariant chain will come to the phagosome where they have the acidified environment and now with the acidified environment these invariant chain you see they are broken down into smaller pieces and now this area is open and the antigen can easily bind to the MSC within the Golgi and then they present the antigen to the CD4 plus T cell. So what did we discuss? We said that MSC2 present the antigen to the helper T cells or CD4 plus T cell. It cannot present the antigen unless the invariant chain is um, uh, broken down or degraded into smaller pieces in the phagosome now what will happen this cd4 plus the t cell they will release cytokines okay that will that will release interleukin 2 and then it can also release interleukin 4 so what is the job of the interleukin 2 it will stimulate the uh, production of uh, more t cells and interleukin 4 they will have uh, stimulate the production of b cells and what is the problem what is the function of b cells i said initially they will stimulate the plasma cells and the plasma cells will produce different antibodies so in a sense that these msc2 they are presenting the antigens to the cd4 plus t cell and they are stimulating the humoral mediated immunity 
okay the, the antibody mediated it is nothing but the humoral mediated so now we understand guys that how does the msc which are expressed on every cell in human they are called hla located on chromosome 6 how they are presenting these antigens to the cd8 t cells and cd4 t cells if it is msc1 they are presenting the antigen to cd8 t cell but if it is msc2 it is presenting the antigen to cd4 t cell so they may twist a vineyard saying that there, there is a mutation let's say guys that there is a mutation in the transporter associated antigen processing so do you think that the antigen will get loaded onto the msc no they cannot why because it requires a channel to for the antigen to go to the rer and get attached to the uh, msc right so that's an important concept similarly they may even ask you that uh, there is some kind of scientist who is doing some research and in the research they see that there is no acidification of the lysosomes so when there is no acidification of lysosome then what will happen the invariant chain cannot get degraded into smaller pieces okay so there is no degradation so now the antigen cannot bind to the golgi okay i, I mean uh, the antigen cannot bind to the msc and present to the antigen to the helper t cell okay try to remember these two concepts very high l and uh, i hope this session helped you guys and anyone wants to take a demo session uh, for my step 1 and step 2 CK preparation please I will be mentioning the website link and the whatsapp number and you are most welcome to join okay thank you guys take care